about us or our strength or our plans. It's you, and your plan, and your strength. And it's your dreams, Lord God, that you've instilled in our hearts to go and fulfill the Great Commission, to go and preach the gospel and make disciples of the nations. He wants you to know he has a mighty plan for you. This is the moment where you say, yes, God, I know that I'm not going to be perfect, but you're going to hold me. You're going to heal me. Jumbo. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's what's up. <laughs> so um, my name is DJ Mose. I am from Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, our official language, actually, we have two official languages in Kenya. We speak English and we speak Swahili. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of Swahili. Is that okay? So when I say Jumbo to you, you say Jumbo right back at me. Okay? Yeah? It's easy. Jumbo. Jumbo. Jumbo means hi. You know, but that's how the posh people say hi, you know, but you know, because when you come to Nairobi, I don't want to go, I do not want you to go and say hi, uh, to say jumble as a way of saying hi. I'm going to teach you how the young people say hi back at home. Is that okay? Very simple. You've gotten the first word in Swahili, now the next one is in Sheng. And Sheng is our, um, it's how the young people speak, you know, we have a way of breaking down our languages, so please say when I say sasa, to, when I say sasa to you, say fiti. Sasa, fiti. Sasa. Fiti. Yeah. When I say sasa, it means how are you? When you say fiti, it's like you're fit. You know, it's fit as a fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's really nice to be here, and of course, I want to say thank you so much to Nick and to the wonderful team uh, of Life uh, Beyond Limbs. It's been um, life without. Let me get it right. <laughs> life without limbs. I'm jet lagged. I had a 16-hour flight yesterday, but um, it's really nice to be here. And you are doing an amazing job. And when I look around this room, it blows my mind away to see the wonderful partners who've come to stand together with Nick and his family, and the wonderful work that God has given him. It's a task. When I think about it, I'm like, only Nick can do this kind of role in this room. Nobody else. No one else, bro. Whenever I've listened to you speak, when you came to a K Crew Bible Study Fellowship, when you spoke at the schools, when I sit next to you and just listen to you speak, I'm like, no one else can do this task that lies ahead of you. It may seem huge, and it is huge, because then you'll know it's not about your power, it's not about your might, but only by God's spirit shall you be able to accomplish the task that's ahead of you. Now, I come from Nairobi, Kenya, a beautiful country in the continent of Africa. So Africa is a continent, yeah? Not a country, it's a continent with 52, with 54 states actually. And um, so Kenya is in the east coast of Africa and uh, we have a population of about 50 million people. Now, Africa has a population as a continent of 1.3 billion people. 1.3 billion people, that's about almost five times the population of the U.S. Now, out of this 1.3 billion people, 70% are below the age of 30. 70%. That means at least 900 million people are below the age of 30. It means that we have a very young continent. It means that we probably have a young continent of young people, who are parenting young people. It could be sad, but then you can also look at it in a very positive way. That these young people, they can be the backbone of our continent. It means that we have a strong working force. It means that these young people, if they have the right foundation in their lives, they'll be able to turn around our continent that has been destroyed 
or messed up because the enemy knows what the potential of Africa is. Africa is one of the wealthiest continents in the world. We have so much untapped talent from the young people, but then also minerals. Africa is a continent that can be able to feed the world, but unfortunately, the world is coming to feed Africa. But this will change, because these 910 million young people, when they come to encounter the gospel of Jesus Christ, there will be a force to reckon with. Now, God has allowed us, as an organization that I work with called K-Crew, or Kubamba Crew, to engage with these young people who you got to see on the screens. There's no one high school, there's no one college, there's no moment on television or radio or social media that we have shared the gospel and not see young people come to the faith. In every place that we have shared the gospel of Jesus Christ, young people have come to the faith. It's amazing when we go to high schools, some of which have a huge Muslim population. And you know, we put our concerts together for the students. And when the Muslim imams come and call their kids to go for the madrasa, and the kids refuse to go for the madrasa because they want to be here where it's happening. And when we give the altar call, the young people, they raise up their hands and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. In the last one year, we've shared the gospel with at least 720,000 young people one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the most beautiful thing is we have at least 275,000 names of those young people who have given their lives to Christ. Now, <laughs> we love young people, and we love living for young people. Again, because I believe from the bottom of my heart that these young people in Africa are the greatest resource that we have. Now, the challenge is, we're not the only ones who are targeting these young people. And so there's only two ways I think you can look at this young generation in Africa. Infinite possibilities or imminent danger. Infinite possibilities or imminent danger. I prefer to use the former, infinite possibilities. God loves young people. And I'm going to read a scripture over here that keeps us going because we value young people because we know what will happen when they come to Christ. The book of Psalm 127, the psalmist wrote and said, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's quiver. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will contend with the enemy at the gates, and the enemy will not prevail. We do have a huge task ahead of us as well. But we are so glad to know that at least this year we have 272,000 young or quivers, uh, arrows in our quiver. And these young people, they will stand up against the messed up continent that we have right now. They will stand up against injustice. They will stand up against corruption. They will stand up against poverty. They will stand up against bad health systems. I'm just passionate about these things because I know what Africa can be. And I'm so glad that together with Nick and his team, that we will reach out to our continent of Africa. And even though they have said that Africa is a dark continent, I am glad to say that in the darkest of places, that even the faintest of light shines the brightest. May the Lord bless you. And may we continue being champions for the brokenhearted. God bless.